Hi friends and welcome to the video. I'm Olivia and if you've never seen my face before, as you see behind me, I am a fragrance enthusiast, reviewer, whatever you'd like to call me. And if you have seen my face before, hello friends. I am very happy to have you here today and very appreciative because I'm kind of going through something right now if I'm being honest with you. I just got a notification that my Instagram that I have worked very, very tirelessly to grow over the last year has been suspended and is in risk of being deleted permanently. And the reason being is they're saying that I violated commerce laws by talking about dupes on my channel as counterfeit items, even though the dupes that I was offering were from reputable places like Zara and Bath and Body Works. So I'm working really hard to get that profile back. For those of you who support me over on Instagram, I am hoping and praying that I get it back very, very soon. So that way I can continue chatting with you guys as usual. So sorry for the delay. I have no idea what's going on and it's stressing me out. And to be honest, I've been really upset about this. So I wanted to do something today that would lighten my mood a little bit, something that would be really fun for me. So today we are talking about strange and unusual fragrances in my collection. So in short, we're going to be talking about fragrances that have unusual notes or characteristics in them. Perhaps it has a normal note breakdown, but it reads very interestingly on the skin, or it has some very interesting notes. So if weird and unusual is your thing, let's get started. Just really quickly though, if you guys aren't following me already, since my page was deleted, I would really appreciate the follow if you haven't already, and if you have, I love you. Okay, on to the perfumes. One house that has absolutely mastered the mystical, the strange, the bizarre is Andrea Mack. Now, I know that I've talked about Andrea Mack fragrances a million times on this channel, but it absolutely deserves it. And I don't believe that I've talked about this one before. So this one is called Crap. And what makes this such a bizarre fragrance is this has a metallic note along with aldehyde. So it gives it a chilled, cold metal sort of smell along with some resin that gives it a little bit of warmth. So it's hot and cold at the same time. This has cedar and patchouli. So to me, what this smells like is the cold, crisp air outside a Roman cathedral where they have some incense burning. It's that resinous, alumy resin, and you smell the wood of the rafters around you. So it's cold, crisp air. It's wooden rafters. It is some dark incense patchouli, and it offers a really interesting hot and cold sensation when you're smelling it, which is a very bizarre thing. Usually something is cooling, like mint, or something is warming like vanilla. But to have those two has a complete alchemy. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more on the unusual side, something very daring, I love this house. And although they're very artful pieces, they're somehow still very, very wearable and they're very enjoyable. So that is Craft by Andrea Mack. The next one that I'm going to talk about is Bizarre for a different reason. So this is Cheeky Smile by Juicebox. Now this is one of your Ambroxan ISOE super molecular fragrances like Another 13 and Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. But I've noticed with those, they tend to be very soft skin scents. And what makes this unusual is although this is a your skin but better molecular type fragrance, this is a powerhouse. It is a monster. You do not need much of this whatsoever. And for this one, the way that these molecules kind of read to my nose is you got a slight amberiness, but you also have a very salty quality. So if you want something that's woody, ambery, salty, and very, very strong on the molecular fragrance side, that is Cheeky Smile by Juicebox. Next up is from the house of Soradora, and this is called Camel Oud. I've talked about this fragrance before, but this smells like every spice in your kitchen cabinet, but not only just the spices themselves, it actually smells like the cabinet. So you get a dry woodiness. You get the resin that kind of holds the cabinet together and you get those strong spices. So you get a really strong hit of cumin with cardamom and saffron. And the oud in this is a Laotian oud. So if you are not a fan of ouds, sometimes they can actually smell a bit fecal. They can actually smell like 
Uh, this one doesn't whatsoever. It's a clean oud. It's a very dry oud. So although this is a very strong oud in itself, it's overtaken by those spices. So this is warm, it is spicy, it is woody. I would say it's unisex leaning slightly masculine just because there is no sweetness and I know a lot of women tend to like something with a little bit of sweetness. That cumin really pops because of some pink pepper in there and there's also some herbal touches. Papyrus, cade oil, and juniper. It is just a very bizarre fragrance. I won't lie but you know what? Something magical happens when I wear this that I put it on and although it is very spicy and one would even say a little bit stinky like it gives you almost a body odor type quality. This kind of smells like the body odor of the hottest person. Like you know when you're attracted to someone and you smell their body odor and you know it's body odor but you're like hmm smells good. That's what this does for me. I don't know why. I have showed it to my other perfume friends and they're like, absolutely not. But for me, it's a win. Next is Bud by Piper and Pero. And let me read you the notes because although they don't sound too out there, it's a little bit out there in my mind because this smells like something and I just figured this out recently and it's kind of funny with the timing. So let me read this to you. It is Bulgarian Rose, Bourbon Whiskey, rhubarb, pineapple leaf, and concrete. So that concrete adds a cold mineral stone type element. All in all, this kind of translates to me a little bit similar to your typical oud rose fragrances like Chagoff oud, although that one is incredibly thick, incredibly sweet. This one is not. It has some boozy qualities. And I'm surprised that there isn't a woody note listed because to me, this comes off a little bit woody on the skin. But there's also something about this that oddly enough comes off a little bit like shaving cream to me. So imagine you have Chagoff Oud from last night on and then you go to shave your beard. I know a lot of us are women, so we probably won't be shaving our beards. Some women have beards, it's not a big deal. This specifically, smells like a Barbie doll that I had many years ago. It was a Ken doll and basically he had like a five o'clock shadow and you put this shaving cream on him and it would disappear and then it would slowly reappear so you had to shave his face and the other day I was going through my perfumes and I smelled this and I was like that is so bizarre but oddly enough I do find this to be kind of a sexy fragrance even though I have a weird doll association with it. This is just a bizarre fragrance to me because from the notes, when you first smell it, you expect it to be a very heavy fragrance and it's not. Somehow it's very sheer. So if you do like Chagoff Oud or anything similar to it, I think you would enjoy this because this is a much more sheer version. Next is a fragrance that I got when I was in Rome and I really fell in love with it when I was over there. So this is called Ignusia by Perfumo Roma. And this has a lot of green grassy notes, but what it smells like to me, it smells like you're eating a juicy Granny Smith apple sitting on a bed of freshly cut grass. Like if you were outside in the dead of summer, someone just mowed their lawn, you're getting that fresh summer air wafting in a freshly cut grass note while sitting by an apple tree. So juicy, juicy, green, and out of the norm of what I typically enjoy, but I actually really like this one. And when I've worn this in the past, other people have perceived it as minty or cucumbery, but undeniably this has a very, very fresh green smell. But I think it's unique because of the true grassiness of it. Next is EBK Deep in Desire Yacht. Now this has some interesting notes. This has grapefruit, this has grapes, hazelnut, dark chocolate, cedar. In the beginning, I get a lot of citrus, but what makes this interesting is this almost has a warm blueberry accord. So those grapes, and the chocolate kind of combine to give almost a rich gourmand feel, but it's warm and cooling at the same time. Once again, the bergamot and grapefruit in the beginning give a lot of tartness. So in the beginning, I get a lot of citrus that's very cooling and refreshing, but then in comes a strong gourmand element while still maintaining a perfume-like aspect. So this smells very elevated. It should be because it is very expensive, but I think it is very, very unique. And I have another from this house that I also find very unique so let me show it to you. So this is aquamarine and powder. I only have a little friend here and as one would imagine this is an iris heavy fragrance. It's powdery, it has that vintage cosmetics type scent to it, but what makes this bizarre is there is this 
oceanic type quality to it where there is like almost like a salty sea breeze running through it. You don't often find that in powdery scents like this. You've got a bit of lavender that gives an herbal touch, but there is also something very aquatic about it while still being very powdery and a little bit vintage feeling. It is a powerhouse, so although these are very expensive, I do think that they are worth the purchase just because the bottle will last you an absolutely long time. Next is Fan Your Flames by Nishane. Now this has coconut, this has rum, this has tobacco and tonka bean and oak moss. I am still getting used to this fragrance because this is not exactly what I expected. I was expecting something a little bit smoky, a little bit sweet, but to me this almost has a rubbery type note to it and almost like a dry wood chip type note so I like all of the notes that are in it but it's not giving me enough sweetness it's kind of a bizarre scent I think it's going to be much more suited for cooler weather right now this is not an appropriate fragrance because when it's 90 degrees you will absolutely choke somebody but this is much more heavy on that oak moss than I thought so it's got this mossy greenness this dried tobacco leaf type smell with a strong hit of booze. I think this is going to do really, really well in winter. I'm just going to hold on to it until then because right now she's a little bizarre on me. I'm really hoping that rubbery type quality that this is giving me is going to dissipate a little bit, but it's a bizarre one. I digress, we will try it out in winter. The next fragrance, unfortunately, I do not have a full-size bottle. I only have this little decant that I got from a friend, and unfortunately, it is almost empty, and I am dying to have a full-size bottle of it because, spoiler alert, I love it. This is Guidance by Amouage. Now, you might have seen some videos online saying that this smells like clean lady parts, and I'm here to tell you, in a way, it does. Apparently, that information was circulating on Fragrantica. If you guys have never checked out Fragrantica, it's a great website where you can go and look at all the notes listed and see what fragrances are similar to the fragrances that you've been liking. And it has a bunch of reviews, and apparently some of these reviews were by Brazilian waxers. And they said that this perfume bears a certain resemblance to clean Brazilian parts. So to me, this is a sweet and spicy rose fragrance. So you are getting the sweetness from pear and the spiciness from some saffron. Along with rose, you're getting some osmanthus and jasmine. So there's a little bit of an indolic touch, just very slightly, because we know that I don't get along with indolic fragrances. To me, indolic is very pissy smelling. So this is not pissy by any means. This has a creaminess from the sandalwood while also having a little bit of nuttiness from hazelnut. So this is an incredibly complex fragrance. And to me, this is a powerhouse. You put this on and the projection and the lasting power of this fragrance is absolutely phenomenal. So although expensive, a beautiful purchase, signature scent worthy, and it is just super duper sexy, intoxicating, but also very refined at the same time. So a little bit bizarre, but definitely worth getting your nose on. Next is from a niche indie house that I've talked about in a few videos, and this is called Decadent Dirty by Wile. To me, this smells like a nightclub because this has this leather and latex thing going on with a red lipstick accord. So you're getting cosmetics, but you're also getting something plasticky along with something leathery. So it kind of smells like a BDSM club, in my opinion. It is definitely something very artful. It's not going to be for everybody. It's a little bit spicy because of some black pepper and it has a note of tobacco that comes off a little smoky. So if you can imagine the entirety of the smell of a BDSM club, that is what I'm getting from this. This one is definitely interesting. One I am really warming up to that is Decadent Dirty from Wile. Next is from the brand Strange Love NYC, and this is called Melt My Heart. And this is a chocolate iris fragrance, but this also has oud. So you're getting a strong, slightly animalic oud, almost slightly fecal oud, but then it's sweetened up with some very refined chocolate, and there is a heavy dose of iris and oris. So it's giving it a powdery, yet thick and buttery touch. 
To me, this smells a little bit vintage. It definitely wouldn't be something that I would wear in the summertime. This is a winter fragrance through and through because it has some very heavy notes, but there is something very regal about this. If you like something that is very refined and elegant, a little bit vintage, but offers something a little bit more interesting, that is Melt My Heart by Strange Love NYC. Next is Je ne sais quoi by Teo Cabanel. Now this has rice, it has matcha and sandalwood. So it has a creaminess, it has a milkiness along with an earthy tea-like vibe. But to me, I've said this in the past and I will say it again, this smells like a milky baby's head with peanut butter on it. I don't know what is giving me that peanut buttery sensation. I'm wondering if the sandalwood has that creaminess and it's coming through a little bit nutty with the rice. This is very smooth. It's very warm. It's very comforting. It is very long lasting and creates a nice little scent bubble around you without choking people out. You'll definitely be smelled, but it's not going to be something that throws across the room. But my friend picked me up from the airport and I was wearing this fragrance and she texted me the next day and she said, what perfume were you wearing yesterday? Because it's still in my car and it smells incredible. This is a compliment getter, but to me it just has some really comforting warming qualities that have a bizarre association. So that's why I put this in the strange category. Next is Dirty Coconut by Heretic. So to me, this smells like a dry coconut husk. So you're getting a little bit of sweetness from the fruit, but you're not getting the coconut water, that really refreshing sweetness that we come to know from a lot of fragrances with coconut. This is dry and husky and almost wood-like. So you almost get a wood chip type scent to it along with a slight bit of coconut. So you get a slight bit of fruitiness with a really, really dry woodiness. And a lot of times you get a lot of sweetness from coconut fragrances. And this is just completely different take on coconut. So that's why I say this one definitely fits the bill for this video. That is Dirty Coconut by Heretic. Next is one of my all time personal favorite fragrances. And this is Invite Only by Kayali. Now the reason that I'm putting this in this category is because I have heard a lot of people say that this smells like Swisher Sweets. So this does have the note of tobacco, but to me, this is more of an ambery fragrance along with some warming notes like cinnamon and tobacco that give it just the most intoxicating quality. I can understand why it doesn't get the most rave reviews because from that house, a lot of people expect very girly fragrances. And to me, this is more on the unisex side, but to me, this is what I would like to smell like every single day. It is warming, it is comforting, it's spicy, it's sexy, and it lasts a very long time. I know people don't have the best luck with the longevity of Kaeli fragrances, but they have not tried this one, obviously, because if you layer this with a cherry fragrance, you're going to smell like a warm, smoky tavern. So a little bit of booziness, a little bit of smokiness, almost as if they had a fireplace going in winter. So you've got those wintry spices like cinnamon floating in the air. This to me is not as niche and complex as a lot of people try to make it out to be. It is just a beautiful ambery scent and definitely in my top 10 of all time. And if you'd like to see a video of my top 10 of all time, I would love to make it for you. I have an updated version that's in my mind. So comment down below, top 10 of all time. Next is Hardines de Misfa by the house of Unui Nomad. When first looking at the notes of this, you're like, okay, it's cardamom, saffron, and rose. We've seen that combination a million times, but this has the note of almonds and dates. So this gives a syrupy, thick sweetness to it. So to me, this ends up smelling like a Middle Eastern dessert. It is very, very decadent. And I don't see the note of date in fragrances frequently whatsoever. And this is a beast mode performer. This lasts for so long, but just know that this is a thick jammy rose. So this is gonna be something that is going to be much better suited for the winter time. I definitely wouldn't fare this in the hot weather right now. So that is Hardines de Misfa by Unui Nomad. Next is a designer fragrance, and that is Angel Muse EDT by Mugler. And this is interesting because in the beginning you have passion fruit that gives this a sweet and tangy vibe, but then in comes the note hazelnut chocolate spread. So almost a Nutella type vibe. And then in the base you have vetiver that reads almost a little bit like patchouli, but a little bit more fresh and a little bit more clean. This almost 
is a little bit dirty and earthy while being sweet, while being fruity. It doesn't really know what it wants to be, but I find it a very interesting scent. And I actually really like the EDT version for summer because there's a lot more juiciness versus the EDP version is a little bit thicker, a little bit more dressed up and a little bit more rich smelling. So this one is a little bit more sheer, but definitely a very interesting one. It is bizarre and coming out of the house of Mugler, although it is a designer fragrance for a long time, they made very out there fragrances, but Unfortunately, with many reformulations of their original scents, they have become watered down and they have become a shadow of their former self. So they're no longer that edgy brand. And they give us things like Alien Goddess, which is a beautiful scent, but it is so mainstream. I kind of want them to be back on their weird shit. And lastly, this one is quite a doozy and the name is quite a doozy. This is by Strangers Perfumery and this is called Roasted Coffee cigarette, whiskey, come get your suede honey baby. <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. I am so surprised that this doesn't have the note of coconut because to me it smells like a coconut tiramisu and it almost has a smoky cigarette like dry down. So let me read you the notes. You've got popcorn, apricot, suede, honey, tobacco, rubber, toasted coffee, whiskey, vanilla, hay, norlimbanol, patchouli, musk, and apricot. So I wonder if that smokiness is coming from the patchouli. Sometimes patchouli can come off a little cigarette-like to me. This is a gourmand in the most heightened fashion. This smells like food. It smells like food, but it also smells like the environment around the food. So if you're looking for something that is a thick gourmand that is very sweet but super complex. It is not like any other gourmand I've ever tried. That is roasted coffee, cigarette, whiskey, come get your suede honey baby by Strangers Perfumery. I lied, I actually have one more that I want to incorporate because this fragrance is the king of weird fragrances. This is by the brand Nasomato and this is called Phantomas. Now this has melon. This has rubber, this has plastic, it has gunpowder. It is just a mishmash of fragrances. I get a strong metallic vibe and this is so pungent, but I also get a really bright melon in there. So metallic plasticky melon, it almost kind of reminds me of, do you remember back in the day in hardware stores, they used to have like big bins of rubber balls that were scented. Imagine that is like a big sheet metal container and it has those plastic balls and it's a hot day. So it's like the hot metal smell, it's plasticky, and then it has this fruity scent to it. It is a really bizarre memory for me, but this, I honestly am getting rid of this one because although it is a cool art piece, it is so intense. One single spray will last you the entire day and it will eat the crowd. It will absolutely fill the room. It is so bizarre, but definitely if you're looking for something with shock value, I could see Lady Gaga wearing something like this because she likes to be very ostentatious and very flashy with her things. And this to me is kind of her like robot techno era. That's what this reminds me of. That is Phantomas by Nasomato. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's videos talking about some peculiar fragrances in my collection. Like I said, because I lost my entire Instagram page, if you guys could give me a follow, it would mean a lot to me. And I would love to hear about how your day is going because I'm going to have to interact with people somehow. So drop comments down below so that way I can get chatting with you guys. And until next Saturday, take care of yourselves, my friends.